own choice. Yeah, they are. Um, and I think I like it. I think so. Um, but it also comes down to like, it's really weird to figure out what you should be prioritizing. A lot of it really does come down to, you know, are, is there a map that you just can't beat a team? And if so, you should consider in that your bans. If you didn't, then you have to really go like, well, do I feel like first pick gains a significant advantage on these specific maps? Um, sometimes like, I know I would go out of my way to like, I thought for a long period of time, second pick was just stronger. So on small maps, so I would just only pick small maps. It wasn't even like, I'm this much better. I would just go, I genuinely think my draft is going to be stronger if I have second pick and it's a small map. The concern though, is that Gale Force are so strong on Towers of Doom. Oh, oh yeah. No, that, but that's again, is like, do I feel like I can't take them on any of the maps? So in this scenario, Towers of Doom being the, you know, GFE dream, maybe it was the wrong choice, but I don't know. We're going to have to find out. Again, they Neventic did this exact same thing against Temple Storm. Yeah, and they're basically out of Battleground options. The only thing that left that they could have chosen would have been Infernal Shrines, and maybe they were concerned about something like a Kerrigan there. Yeah. Either way, Towers of Doom very soon. We're looking at Globals. Um, anything stand out to you from what either of these teams were picking in the past there or what they'll be looking to do? I don't I don't think anything's that crazy. Again, I do think Artanis may be a little bit better on this map than some of the others. Uh, but Neventic has banned uh, Artanis quite frequently, but is yet to be able to uh, pick it up for themselves. So we'll see. Uh, other than that, not really. I expect Gale Force to play the global game and, you know, uh, do what they do. Aka face on Brightwing, Mikey Doll onto uh, the false set. Whereas Neventic has got to have a different plan. Team Neventic is looking at banning Tassadar. Yeah, well, it's been very, very norm for them so far. It, it is strange to me that they weren't doing something more like B step where they ban Tass and then grab Zarya if they're that concerned about shielding, but I guess Zarya Tracer, if Gale Force runs that again, is not as much of a problem as Task Tracer. What's Gale Force going to ban? What's their issue with? I'm guessing it's going to be the Ragnaros or the Malfurion, I guess. I think Malfurion is what they go with. The last game was Morales. This game is Malfurion. It seems to me, once again, Gale Force is running a strategy that they kind of started in a way, which is focusing on Kenma. Neventic, are they going to be looking towards the Ragnaros, or are they going to be going with Artanis? Uh, now that he's managed to be able to make it through, I don't think... I'm pretty sure we've never seen Neventic play Artanis, right? They banned it almost all games during the first, but I never once saw them uh, put it under their own players here so I don't know if they have maybe the confidence to do so they just objectively fear the hero uh, because they were banning it in both slots either way uh, with Malfurion removed opening with a support would probably be a weak play they go with the Zarya uh, there we go that's I what I was a, wondering I, I definitely enjoy that with the removal of Tassadar that you brought up there um, False step right wing, not surprised, the exact same thing. Uh, I brought that up already, comfort, but then this is exactly what they did in the rotation last time we saw GFE playing on towers. It's the first time we're seeing um, Neventic on towers and you're right, they have not played Artanis yet in the HGC. With Zarya, what else are Neventic looking for? Ragnaros is still, is still a possibility. Um, he is such a good one at being able to delay around the altars too, a lot of them are within range of a bell tower that he can take over and delay if he's waiting for teammates to come back from going back to get health and mana or even from respawn timers. I'm trying to I'm think of what you else. Lee Ming and Rhaegar? You, I think Lee Ming is a must for them unless they change their mind, but they genuinely pick Lee Ming higher than almost every other team in A on maps where she's good. And this is her probably third best map, second best. Um, and they do, they go the Rhaegar and they go the Lee Ming. Now GFE, what are they looking for? Is the Warriors, you know, something they want to stab at? Yeah, I think removing another global, uh, unless they're going to pick it in their next rotation. Uh, but I think something that you're afraid of to pair with that Zarya, it could be as um, another weird one would be a Zeratul ban actually could come out here from Gale Force, just the Zeratul leaming duo. Yeah, but that's ETC. I think that's a lot safer. I think so too, and Aventic. Can't do anything about supports. Maybe could to Warriors too. I kind of wondered that since neither side has a Warrior. Just limit the 
objectively best top tier ones, so both ETC and Diablo go away. Gale Force Esports now, uh, they absolutely love this map and have already shown their patterns on it, so are they going to move into... The Tassadar is going to be removed, but last time we saw them move in with a Vala Tassadar rotation here. Zarya has been taken away from them as well, which is the all five members that they had into their composition, so what are they going to do? Yeah. I, I don't... I don't like the Vala without the Tassadar, especially without the Zarya too, so I think they're going to move more the Tychus Avenue. Um, if they go for that, maybe uh, with Li Ming removed, maybe we'll see some kind of you know weird one. Maybe a Chromie pops in here or there. Um, I know we're not Europe, but it might happen. It is probably one of her better maps. Yeah, this is the place where they ran that solo Zarya once. But without that, Zeratul and Muradin right. are the choices. I want... Do you, do you think they're going to Jaina as that last pick? It is an option. I don't think they're going to, but possibly Varian is locked in as the response to Zeratul. Noventic has already done that um, once before, and Ragnaros is going to be the last locked in here. It could be a Jaina. Yeah, you might be right. I, I, want to s hmm. I don't know if I like it if it is, but it could be. I think more... I want to say the Tychus is what I always like. He feels so strong. He feels so good. Um, GFE does like to run this Zeratul with a global. Dahaka. And it, why not add another global to that? Yeah, well, I, well, for some reason, I have forgotten completely in the last couple of drafts about Dahaka, um, even when considering the solo. But we, this is an interesting draft here. I like I like Noventix far more than I thought I was going to. Um, at the start of it with the Zarya pick very early on and the Rhaegar Li Ming, I thought things got a little bit hairy. Uh, but I think it's a lot closer, I guess, than I thought it would be just looking at draft alone. My concern for them is that can they keep up with the constant yeah. everywhereness that is this big global composition for Gale Force. And if anybody is solo soaking a Ragnaros, if Zeratul has his eyes on that person, all of a sudden it becomes a 3v1 or even a 2v1 yeah. where he comes in, he body blocks, polymorph, slow down, and ganks could continue for Gale Force Esports. I think how I would put it is that because Gale Force was so dominant in game one and two, and now we see them on home turf with a very familiar strategy, I think Noventic is really going to struggle here. That being said, I don't hate the decisions. I guess I like where some of them are going, the thought processes behind uh, some of the drafts. So uh, we'll see how it does manage to work out. I think a lot of what's going to happen is all about Varian. I think Varian's play needs to be absolutely on point, uh, you know, baiting a certain capture because those globals are going to be isolated or have the Zeratul very vulnerable to Varian. So if they do get that burst, the CC um, timed properly, there's a lot of like, well, yes, you were going to do your Towers of Doom, you know, I'll send Zeratul here with False Ed there, bait the False Ed. Suddenly, one of those can easily be picked off with a leaming Varian combo. But it probably won't be Bloodlust this time, right, for Kenma? Especially going up yeah. against False Ed with Gust. I would I would avoid it at all costs. Yeah, I was again I was surprised that we saw it in the last one. I thought it was gonna be a Sunder Ancestral, but um either way, uh, I don't think there's any way we see it go into Bloodless. It just doesn't complement the composition well enough. When it comes down to the actual team fights, do you give the edge to Noventic then to be able to pull that out, especially since they do have Varian, Ragnaros, these these strong stunlock uh, heroes? It's too uncomfortable, or too comfortable of a play style on the side of Gale Force and too comfortable of a map for me to ever be like, I think Noventic can. It's just that I think it's a, a cool response. All right, let's go into the game and see if Noventic can do it once again, bringing the series back or if Gale Force Esports will close it out. All right, so here we go. Down two games here against Gale Force Esports. It's going to be Neventic. Uh, we're going to have Zeratul played by Fan. Oh, I read that wrong, my bad. Zarya is going to be played uh, by Tom Sir B Kid on Varian, Zuna on Ragnaros, Kenma on Rhaegar, and Big Impact on the Li Ming. And for Gale Force Esports in the red, this time Zeratul played by Fan, Akaface playing his favorite Brightwing, Michael Udall on Falstad, Proen on Muradin, and Equinox playing Dahaka. Uh, another major difference to note in this game is we're going to have big impact on the Li Ming rather than Zuna as we've seen in the past ones. Um, other than that, when it comes to the builds, everything looks to be, you know, pretty close to norm. We see uh, Zarya focusing a bit more when it comes to the auto attacks with Feel the Heat. That is an interesting one. Not focusing on 
I love Having Heal Heat, Having grenade personally. to hit the back, do you like it paired with To The Limit at level 7? I don't. Uh, I've tried it a lot of times. I can't see the value too often, uh, but by itself, I really do like Feel The Heat. Um, I don't know if I look at Kill Force's composition as the one uh, where I adore it. Very and actually the global play there, everybody making that rotation and unison. That's what we were talking about. This is what Gale Force loves to do. Uh, absolute full collapse, but again, um, the amount of damage you can get out against targets, you know, they always are like, well, I'll just be able to get off on... Oh, oh Zuna. My. He does throw out Sulfurus just to get some he self-healing, but with so many people there, the body block's well-timed so that fan doesn't take too much damage, but enough to start to get uh, the damage train going on Zuna. Two quick kills for Gale Force e Esports to start off the game, and with this global strategy, that's exactly how they want to play out this battleground. They want to get ahead in experience and therefore core health by taking control of the altars. And then later on, yes, Naventa can try to come back, but it puts more pressure on Naventa to do that, which may make them make some more mistakes that Gale Force Esports can capitalize on. And so now Gale Force with this global, what are they going to be doing during this Triple Shrine? The main thought process is typically you want Zeratul to be with one of the globals, you bait them out while you leave the other global who can handle any 1v1 that it might be into on one part, which is going to be Tahaka. He's going to be the survivor. Brightwing's the vulnerable one, and you bait that rotation uh, down below. They even, because they have so many globals, they're just going to keep false set up on top as well, see what you guys are going to be up to. Big impact, we'll be able to get the delay. Um, but as long as bottom is channeled now, and or yeah, bottom and left have been channeled. Everybody's going to make the rotation on here, and I do expect Gale Force to get the upper hand. But the people from Gale Force who went down were not the globals, so it did take a bit of time and seemed scary. But immediately, as soon as some of the members of Naventic showed at the right altar for Gale Force, the rotation came in from Zeratul and Murden, making sure that Dahaka and Falstaff could safely pick up the altar. So two altars for Gale Force at the very first phase. One positive side to the composition of Nementic outside of that, ooh, the combo on Equinox. He's burnt his self heal. He does have burrow? a burrow still, but he's going to burrow and drag. Yeah, and then drag after. Oh, I thought he was going to be able to get that pick there, but he will be able to survive. Zuna makes this rotation while Gale Force Esports is actually just going to be able to seal the Sapper camp down below and have their own. So that is a, a reasonable response here, but Gale Force still with the slight edge especially because they are still soaking all of the lanes, and that's not the case for Team Naventic. Gale Force gets both the Sapper camps. Gale Force can focus on the bottom lane, hoping that eventually they'll get to the point where they, this is a constant source of pressure. They can take this whenever they get a few kills off of Team Naventic. But taking out towers in the top kind of lets Team Naventic do the same. The only difference is there's only one Sapper camp in the top lane. Uh, yes, and one thing I was going to bring up before that I was talking about with Ragnaros and the value that it has outside of the triple shrine phase. In a solo shrine phase, we could see it again, uh, like the Zul-esque use that we saw out of Team 8, or, uh, in that they were able to they were able to soak two lanes uh, while the fight was happening elsewhere, and that can force a bad response out of the globals on the side of GFE. So we'll see if Ragnaros ends up playing that playstyle, but Equinox is in a heavy brawl onto Zuna as well. He does get the furrow, so he might be able to survive, and Zuna does go down here, and Zarya is nowhere to be found to join this fight as Naventic seems like they're on full retreat. This was great from Naventic to know in general where the picks uh, were going to be coming out from Gale Force. It's just that with Burrow, Equinox being the target, they were able to sustain just enough that Gale Force came out on top of that. And the next altar phase is starting. Crowen keeping a watchful eye on the members of Naventic when they start channeling their own altar. Is he going to actually try to delay this? It is risky. Not all the members of his team are here yet. Kenma is rotating in. That forces Crowen to uh, dwarf toss out. And both of the altars will just be traded, but the whole time Falstad's been soaking in the bottom lane. Yeah, Gale Force is no longer considering we, how do we abuse our globals uh, to be able to secure multiple shots. Most of it is how do we secure shots while securing experience, so that as the game moves on later on, they have nothing to fear because a talent tier advantage is going to be in their hands. They do forfeit uh, this camp, but Dahaka will be able to secure the one on top. And let's be honest here, these sappers going to be able to clear up rather quickly. So half level lead now for Gale. Force Esports. This screams that Naventic is scared to me. They are rotating as five when they're a level down, trying to get sappers, stealing sappers away, yes, but if they can't start getting kills off of this, the constant soaking from Gale Force is going to further their experience lead. 
Yeah, uh, you're uh, you're very much right. It's just the power of having so many globals. Naventic here um, was trying to find the answer, and it's not like uh, this early game started worse than every other game so far for Naventic. Yes, the experience kind of shows that things are getting pretty ugly, uh, but it wasn't you know three picks here and there. The other ones were just Gale Force making it to a point to be able to out team fight and proceeded to uh, you know move in Equinox with the flank, the drag follow up to Zarya is going to be uh, Gonzo here. Uh, and the rest of Naventic, nothing to be able to do about it as they are split pushing and soaking. Heroic ability is almost available for Gale, for Gale Force Esports through their great soaking. And Kenma is doing what he can for his team. Wave clearing all the way up in the top. I mean, he's just going to stay there. It's, yeah. He knows he can't do anything about it. And it's one of the most depressing feelings in the world. Zuna is going to get caught out again. He's going to be going down here. Heroic abilities, there they are. Everything standard. Adaptation, the new favorite for Dahaka, especially like with that. its buffs. <laughs> Down goes Ragnaros, used to take 40 people to do that. <laughs> That's a good one, I haven't heard that one. Uh, very well done. Either way, we do have the Shrines going over. Uh, that's going to set Team Naventic's core down to the 24 health. Uh, again, a uh, level and three-quarter advantage. More like a bit in a level and a half. Fawcett does fly top. Is Rhaegar under pressure? No, Drag doesn't land, but they haven't seen him yet. He actually flew into Fog. I do think that this was pretty expected for Gale Force Esports to get ahead in the early game. Once Naventic can get heroic oh, abilities, yeah. then they can start trying to team fight. And on Towers of Doom, it's not over until the last core shot hits. So there's always uh, a possibility that your team can come back in this map. No, absolutely. A lot of it was focused around having that taunt, uh, I think, with their composition. The drag coming out even after the 10. We do see Thompson using a very good expulsion zone to try and peel off here. The taunt ends up landing. Void has been used. Void's used. Dahaka's right in the middle of it, too. Does he have a drag to bring Thompson back in? Doesn't even have to. Body blocks hitting B Kid and a gust to boot. Polymorph follows. B Kid's not getting out of here very quickly, anyways. Drag was. Once again, hitting Varian, another takedown at eight versus zero in kills for Gale Force Esports. And now they can continue to go around that whole time. Kenma has just been split soaking up in top, trying yep. to get his team caught up. Did I ever tell you about the joke Cloud9 had about Tempo Storm for a long no. period of time? You could, they knew they won the series when Dreadnought was split pushing. And that is exactly it. When you know your team needs to be able to get the experience, so you're like, I'm Rhaegar, I'll get the wave clear, I'll help us, I will represent myself in a lane, and then your whole team's dying, but you're like, I can't join this fight in time, so I'm going to proceed to keep pushing because it's the best thing I can do. It sucks, and it's not fun, but that is the indicator for them, and Gale Force right now is doing that right now to Dementic. 32 shots to 24 when it comes to the core health. We see another map objective spawning here in 10 seconds. Pressure, Sapper's on top, Sapper's on bottom, and Gelfor's about to pick up the 13 talents here. This is not looking pretty for Naventa Gilly. B Kid is at least hiding in the bush in the bottom. If that's where Dahaka brush stalks in, he might be able to get Stunlock, turn around with the rest of the team and kill him. Pro and dives in onto Kenma in the back, forcing him to go toward the rest of the members of Gale Force. Here comes Equinox before Ancestral Healing can connect on uh, Li Ming. Li Ming is down, and now all of Naventic are forced into a corner. Zuna's health bar drops rapidly. Kenma, the next to fall, Tomster will be uh, just going to be up to his death, and a full team wipe is imminent for Gale Force Esports. Gale Force is going to be able to secure a minimum of one bell tower here before they finish those shots. Ball said you see flying, getting the Still pressure up to top. That's going to be two, meaning the shots are now going to be six, hitting the core of Naventic in a matter of seconds here. Are they going to? Wow, they're going for all three, no Dread. They're going for the trifecta. I don't, I don't think they can do this. Dahaka's waiting. Nah. He's, yeah, Dahaka is going to start the channel here. Uh, before we get into uh, any other crazy action, we're going to take another minute to appreciate what just happened in that last team fight because it was there was a lot of beautiful things here. Specifically, the gust that just happened to isolate everybody and push them there. But this is the small things that I think are beautiful about Gale Force here today and their performances. Even Kemma is going to be on the tree and Crowin, he's just going to get that Skullcracker. And even before letting anybody run away, he's going to throw out the Storm Bolt, get the body block. Like they aren't just taking, okay, we got the pick, this is good. They are doing everything they can, calculating how many things can we get and that is why we see these full wipes and now a three almost four level lead over their rival Navent. Gilfors are also defending the bottom bell tower while Michael Udall pushes in the mid. If he can take this down, they're starting to get the free shots the entire time. But Falstad isn't here. This is a time when Naventic wow. starts to jump in. Have Gilfors been too greedy? 
They do end up losing one. Now Fallset is there. He does have Gus off of cooldown. He's got a lot of poke too. They're going to commit. Here's good. Gus is going to isolate. Kemma is diving pretty deep. There's a the polymorph. Oh, suddenly Crohn's in a bad spot. Avatar is going to be used, but they have a moment to be able to retreat here as the bell tower has now been converted. Neventic shots, uh, or excuse me, Neventic's core is no longer going to be receiving those periodic shots, but I mean, that was a silver lining, but this game is still absolute control for GFE. Three level lead over twice the health onto the core, and they're just dictating the movement of Neventic all throughout this game. Yeah, Gale Force have that 16 to 13 level that most teams dream of having in a game. Team Neventic are playing cleanup to make sure that they don't just lose the game right here. Because how do you try to contest the triple ultra phase that comes in with the fifth phase without 16 talent tiers and when you haven't won a team fight. Yeah, it's a very difficult position to be in here. And now we see a triple phase again. Four bell towers for both of the teams. Zerato with aggressive positioning. Brightwing is going to retreat for now. Wait to teleport as Dahaka is on the far right. Zarya is just there to be able to get the de delay in the upper left. Fan probably won't reveal himself. There he goes. The initiation. There is going to be the polymorph, and she's going to be going down. Expulsion zone's not enough here. Uh, that will secure at least shots for an eventic down below, but not picking up a kill is what they were hoping to be able to do. A man down. Gale Force Esports here, full control over this game. Gus comes in to help Crowen get back out of this dangerous situation. Three man Void Prison Kenma isolated from the rest. Equinox jumping in and throwing down Dark Swarm. Lee Ming is taken out. So does Brightwing though. That's a one for two at least. They're getting some. Sulfur Smash drops down. It takes out another one. Crowen and Equinox, the front line staying strong. This looks to be a team wipe dread as Crowen Secures another storm bolt. Crohn's been pretty impressive with these storm bolts. Yeah, he's and doing a very good job. Fan will make it five. Yeah, Crohn's doing very well this game, uh, much better than some of the early ones. He is hitting pretty much everything. His body blocks are on his point. His initiations are very well thought out. Uh, I mean, for me, this game, it's got to be Mike Udall. I feel like he's stepped up a lot. Fan is performing well. Give, don't get me wrong, none of the players on GFE are uh, doing poorly by any means, but. Mike has had some very good gusts, his DPS, he's barrel rolling aggressively at all the right times here. And what that is going to be able to do now is secure this boss. More shots are slowly ticking away onto the core of Neventic as they are now within lethal range on their core. And Dahaka is just going to play the game. Equinox pushing this lane in the top lane to start pushing the pressure back this is onto the. 18 to 2. I know. The, I just 28 looked, versus 4. I just looked at the numbers. That is 18 to 2. It's My not goodness. pretty, but Gale Force's play has been very pretty, beautiful even. Their constant rotations on Towers of Doom this is, it. is so good. This is, this is why I was concerned that Team Neventic let Gale Force pick this battleground. Because yeah. for wherever else, however strong they look, they always look the strongest here. Yeah, I very much agree with you. But now we do have to appreciate the fact that Neventic has the ability to fight on the same talent here for the first time pretty much the whole game. And so we'll see how that's gonna be able to work out for them. Every heroic is available. They have to consider shots on both sides. Honestly, Neventic is just gonna get voided and gusted away. Here's gonna be the gust versus the channels and there's the void and there's a the gust. That's gonna be G. G is the channel on Equinox. It's not confirmed actually. Sulfur Smash. The Sulfur Smash got the interruption. The taunt is coming through. Akka is in a tough spot. No blink heal. And suddenly what looked like a pretty victory here might be falling apart for GFE. Maybe the channel just wasn't quite fast enough or things weren't again. lined up just enough. Equinox wanted to go back in. Somebody has to go down. We've got Ragnaros and Kinma in the bottom to start channeling. B-Kid and Tomster in the top. They might have at least stopped. They did at least stop from losing the game right here, right now. But they are by no means out of this, Arnaventic. Yeah, this is going to be still a tough spot because GFE is closing in on that 20. And it's unrealistic that Neventic will be able to pick up, unless they win another fight in between, pick up 20 before that next phase while Gale Force will still have that into their hands. They are also looking to open up other pressure points on the map, and that is going to be at the bell tower on top to Haka, securing those sappers to be able to move in. That should force a rotation. We also have to consider the fact that Gale Force has Gust. They haven't hit 20 yet. Um, but a gust is used on this map is actually like a lethal point. When you have those sappers pressuring in, if your opponent goes to be able to defend them, you just gust them all the way, and those 
will move in, attack the core, and win the game. And this is a bad spot for Neventic. That gust oh. was used just to push all the members of Neventic underneath the bell tower, which is still firing down. There are some minions to soak up for now. Huge oh. Sulfurus smash just obliterates three of the members of Gale Force Esports. Neventic turn right back around to secure the bell tower. But there's going to be three shots moving shot. the core on the top. There's one, two, three. Now one health remains on the core of Neventic, but we're going to take another glance at that huge play coming out of Neventic. There they come in. We're looking for Expulsion Zone goes down too. Expulsion it's Zone this. on the member. They try smash. to go in. All nice. three in the center with the Q coming out from Zuna. My goodness. Beautiful plays from Neventic, barely keeping him back in this game. But still, it's Tur only gotten them 20. It's one health versus 19. It's a mountain to climb. It is a mountain to climb, but that experience they were able to gain before the next Shrine phase is beyond worth it. Those three kills have net them a lot of experience. 20 is in control when we face the next phase. Also, uh, very good job from Gale Force Esports being able to clear out that bell tower. It's a 20 second, so everybody will be alive on the side of Gale Force Esports. There's only two up. Again, they have very good control heroics. We didn't see Falstead actually move into Wind Tunnel, um, so won't have nearly as consistent. He's only got his single gust, but he does have the mobility advantage here. This is a tense moment. Even if Deventic wins it, there is still a lot to go, but all it takes is one mistake, and Gale Force still have it. Without all of these, or without this bottom bell tower, it's hard for Gale Force to move into a position to be able to get to the altars, and Gale Force are just focusing on taking out the bell tower and bottom and set Zuna using Molten Core to stall out so they get all of the shots from both of the altars. And now it's seven to one. Seven to one. The well now being harassed by Zuna. Uh, not much you can do about that one. Sad day. Uh, but very well done. Neventic is somehow being able to turn around what looks like an unwinnable game for a large portion of it. Bell Towers are being returned here for GFE. Bottom will be soon. The Sapper has now been started for Neventic. They'll be able to try and apply that pressure. But between Gust and Void, I don't know if it's realistic for them to make huge plays. Uh, when it comes to the sappers, not nearly as much as it is for GFE. Right, the bell tower too is very low and it takes a little while for the sappers to get in. So the best uh, Neventic can do is have Zuno and the rest of uh, Neventic stand up super far so that Gale Force potentially makes a positional error by trying to get the bell tower back. But seeing that that is not to be done, Neventic are rotating in. They see Mike in the mid. Dahaka is in top, not sure if they realize that. Yeah, he did show himself quite a bit ago, um, and I, I think it's reasonable to expect Dahaka is going to be on his own. But the fact that Udall, um, see if he senses this boss being started, the transition for Neventic, I think they totally understand that they're just afraid to do anything about it, considering uh, they have three members in the bot lane. So this is four more shots. Now we have a game on our hands, Gilly. This is getting insane. Somehow Neventic have been able to claw back into it, being down so far in core health. Three versus one. And this is why Towers of Doom puts out some awesome Heroes of the Storm games. It's it, not over until the core actually falls. And all it took was that one play where you saw the double zoning tools used on the side of GFE. And when it didn't work fully, Zuna with that interrupt, I mean, Zuna is just performing on this Ragnaros. So consider that. He stopped the game from being lost and then proceeded to turn that three-man full value so Fury Smash into his Q. I mean, come on. This is it doesn't it. get much better than that. Why isn't Dahaka coming down? It is time. This is it. It's This is the altar for either team. Whoever takes this altar takes the game. And in Gale Force Esports spot, that's taking the series. Yeah, one channel. A lot of pressure, tension already going in very early. That was miscommunication as Equinox and Void do together, but it doesn't matter. When Kenma is already going to be dead, Gus is going to be there to split, so no zoning tool still available. There's the Burl. Expulsion zone is used. Here comes Akaface and Michael Udall, too. Gus has already been used. Crohn's in the back. It's taunted, but big impact drops. No more Lee Ming. No more resets. Equinox pulling Zuna out. Crohn's getting fairly low in health, as is Fan. Submerged for Ragnaros allows him to heal right back up. Tomster is doing everything he can to keep Be Beacon and Zuna shielded, but they have to continue to fight They've this. They've got it back to be able to tap the well, but then they're going to be able to lose the game. Akka has already started the channel halfway through. So Fear of Smash is going to be used. Now Fan's going to join this fight. Look at Beacon's health dropping so much. Zuna's done. That's going to be Beacon with the Stormbolt. Tomster used to share the same fate. Beast up as much as you want, but Gale Force Esports is going to take this series 3-0 over Neventic. It almost was a miracle comeback for Neventic. But in the very end, Gale Force Esports came out on top, a 3-0 over Neventic. 
something we did not even see Tempo Storm do. Yeah, that was insane performance coming out from Gale Force Esports. Very, very clean play. And obviously, after watching the interview bit between them all, they're probably feeling very, very good about that a whole series. Yeah, I cannot wait to get to talk to them and see how they're feeling. I especially want to hear what they did to stay calm. I mean, I know Carlin talked about it before, their ability to stay calm even after a loss in a series, that they can come back and be okay and not ever start to tilt. But it had to be so hard in that game, especially as Naventic is, is just somehow kept not dying. Yeah. They did a very good job, and it all, like, like I said, shout out to Zuna and his performance on the Ragnaros. He was the main factor for them to be able to even turn that game around at all. That being said, Gelforce was doing a lot, you know, kind of cheeky play with the Void, with the Gus. It's not very common to go that route to try and secure a game, so I can see why that slip up happened, but I, it was just very well done. Good play coming out from both sides, and impressive for GFE. Well, we're waiting to hear from Michael Udall. We want to get him on the phone to congratulate him and hear about that series versus Naventic. Pick his brain about what exactly he'll be tweeting out, maybe to oh. Naventic or not tweeting. Any, uh... how, many, how many past retweets it is? Because for those who don't know, <laughs> they have this thing where they like look through each other's Twitter feed until yep. somebody talks trash like six months ago about a different player, and then they retweet it six months later because they think it's funny, I guess. I don't know. I just, I just go through my Twitter feed and suddenly see a, a tweet from, like, Kenma six months ago that Mike Udall retweeted, and it'll be something talking down on one another. Well, besides that, Gale Force Esports now, 3-0 over Team Naventic. We had a lot of questions, even yeah. at the beginning of the series versus B-Step, about how Gale Force Esports was going to be able to pull off the four flex in a support strategy. What are your thoughts on it now? They've, uh, they've done it, I guess. I, I I will say I'm hesitant to believe in it in the long run, especially when play of the entire region rises. But for now, I think it is a successful approach um, that they're doing very well. I think off of just raw play alone, I'd be comfortable to say that I think Gale Force is definitely in that 1-2 slot so far. Um, I think them and Tempo Storm are near the top, as long as they keep playing like they just did there. So. It seems like it's very good for them, like, making their opponents not be able to tell what's going to happen in the draft. Yeah, and, and coming up with multiple strategies, like the towers, giving them uh, more than just, you know, one thing, like just the Ragnaros to be able to be concerned about. All right, well, I think we are ready for our interview with Michael Udall. Hey, Mike, can you hear me? Yes, I can. What's up, guys? Woo, congratulations on your win over Team Naventic. How's the team feeling? Yeah, we're feeling really good. We're really happy. This is a match we're really looking forward to. Uh, always a good feeling to dumpster in Eventic, you know, easy 3-0, Eventic in 2017. Okay, well, let <laughs> us know. We want to hear about your four flex in a support approach. What is it that started you guys down that path? And I don't know, I guess just like what was it that made it so appealing to you guys? I mean, that's something I've always wanted ever since I started playing Heroes of the Storm. I remember... I think it was last summer when they announced that there might be like six man rosters or something. And Zoya announced something of 10 man rosters is the futures of Hero of the Storm. So that way you have everyone playing their best hero. Um, and then once we picked up Equinox, it was a possibility just because he has such a large melee assassin and assassin pool. Um, it's amazing. I mean, it worked out well. And it did. Yeah. What was your guys' thought process in the last game? Obviously, having such great control over, obviously, you talked about how much you didn't want to uh, lose an event again. Then you're getting so close. Game number three, things are looking very, very good. And then suddenly, oh, max range, Ragnaros is going to be able to get the delay after you burn Void and the Gus. And then he hits a huge three man, and this game is suddenly winnable for Naventic. Like, what was the thought process, the communication going on there? Uh, I mean, that's on me. I, I called for a fight because I got the five-man gust into the floor, and Fan, he said, like, right before I said, I can gust him in, Fan said, I have VP in 15. Um, and he, like, kind of tried to back me off. Um, that was just a bad fight by us. Like, if we just play it slow, wait for VP to be up, um, just like that last fight, we just isolate one person, there's no way we lose. Um, so, I mean, I mean, that props is an event. That was a huge show for a smash. Like, like, that was props. They kept training Akka. Yeah, I'm sure that was very scary to have to deal with that, too. But congrats. You guys were able to pick up a 3-0. So before we go, do you have any shout-outs for your fans or anybody else? Yeah, I mean, I just want to thank everyone. Thank Gale Force. Uh, thank our sponsors. Um, and if you guys want to check out Fan, Crowen, and I, we all stream. Uh, Twitch.tv slash Crowen, Twitch.tv slash StarCraft2 Fan, and Twitch.tv slash Michael Udall. Come hang out with us. Awesome. Well, congrats again. Good luck with the rest of HGC for you. Thank you, guys. You have a good one. Always nice to get to talk to Mike. Yeah, he's a, he's a fun little lad. You know, he's fun to hang out with, fun to get to have a conversation with. 
Um, and you know, he's pretty good at the video game. Don't 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 be afraid to tune in those Twitch streams. You know, I I love the shameless plug we got going on. You know, we had Quack with like his monster. Now we got the Twitter. Follow me on <laughs> yeah. Twitter. 